And it's my pleasure to introduce um, the talk from Diana Suleimanova, who's at Brunel University with a range of others. And let's uh, run the video now. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Diana Suleimanova and I'm a research fellow at Brunel University, London. Today I'm presenting a study conducted in collaboration with Hamid Arabnijad, Walter Dilling and Derek Roy entitled Sensitivity Driven Simulation Development, a case study in forced migration. The content of the presentation as follows. First, I will provide overview of model development in current research. Second, I will introduce sensitivity-driven simulations development to investigate the sensitivity analysis of input parameters in developing more detailed simulations. To showcase our approach, I will explain simulation development approach and flea code for forced migration. Using sensitivity-driven development approach, we performed sensitivity analysis on input parameters in the FLEE algorithm and refined our assumptions around parameters based on results of the first iteration and they performed another set of sensitivity analysis. Finally, I'll provide a summary of our study. To start with, in current research, model development is guided largely by four main approaches. First is a top-down design process, which is a planned implementation of natural laws representing an aspect of the physical world. Second is the incremental refinement of existing models by adding in desired aspects that are missing in the original. Third is the availability and incorporation of data sources as inputs or validation targets. And last is the calibration of existing model parameters against data in an attempt to further reduce the forecasting error. Our simulation development process focuses on approximating human behavior and we find ourselves frequently constrained by our limited awareness of natural laws as well as lack of existing models that are both relevant and validated. Also, we have concerns that minimizing the validation error by calibrating existing model parameters against data could lead to overfitting, which we could like to avoid. Overfitting not only reduces the ability of our simulations to be reused in new contexts, but it also makes it highly sensitive to the validation data sources that we work with. We currently rely mostly on incorporating data sources as model input in approach C uh, and to combine those with the heuristics about human behavior derived from general knowledge and qualitative data. So we propose a sensitivity driven simulation development approach where we guide this development of simulations using sensitivity analysis. It can be used to further develop and refine existing simulations. So for instance, given an existing simulation, we can apply it using the following four steps. First is that we measure sensitivity of keep assumptions in our simulation using existing sensitivity analysis techniques. Using the sensitivity analysis results, we identify which parameters have the largest and possibly even disproportional effect on the validation results. We label these parameters as pivotal parameters, as well as small differences in their value have leveraging effect and uh, leading to much larger and possibly unrealistic change to the results. Third, we refine the underlying model logic that involves the pivotal parameters and manually extend the model and implementation by adding additional rules, making a more detailed breakdown of object types or incorporating derivative parameters. Last, we either consider simulation to be fit for purpose or we go back to the first step and repeat the procedure once more. As you can see, the whole uh, diagram is flowchart shown in the right hand side. As I mentioned, our approach can be used to further develop and refine existing simulations, which is in the case of simulation development approach for forced migration. It consists of six main steps, simulation, situation selection, data collection, model construction, model refinement, simulation execution, and analysis. To start with, we select a country and time period of a specific conflict, which resulted in large scale of forced displacement. Second, we obtain relevant data to the conflict from three data sources. First is the armed conflict location event data project with accurate conflict data. Second is the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the UNHCR data. And last is the mapping platform, such as big maps or the OpenStreetMaps. 
We construct our initial model using these data sets and create, among other things, a network-based, agent-based model. Once we have built the initial model, we refine it as a part of the fourth phase. Here, we manually extract population data to help determine where forcibly displaced people flee from, as well as information on border closures and the forced directions can be implemented. The fifth phase involves the main simulation, which we run to predict, given the total number of forced population in the conflict and distribution of displaced people across the individuals across camps can be identified and found. We run our simulations using the flea agent-based code and perform sensitivity analysis on our on input parameters. Once the simulations have completed, the, we then analyze and validate the results against the full NHCR for displacement uh, numbers. FLEA is an agent-based simulation code written in Python, which you simulate one day at a time. We place agents in the conflict zones, which are the red dots on the right-hand side network map for Mali. And then we also, each agent decides whether they stay put or move to a neighboring location, such as towns or towards the camps. If they move, which location do they go depends on the chance of to move and the peak specified direction, depending on the network map of the country. There are six main input parameters that we analyzed for sensitivity analysis. Specifically, agents' decisions depend on the following parameters. So move, max move speed, which is the agent's maximum speed in the simulation while traversing between locations with a default value of 200 kilometers per day. Conflict move chance is the probability of agents moving from conflict location with a default value of 1.0. Camp move chance is the probability of agent moving from camp locations with default value of 0.001. And default move chance, which is the probability of agent moving from other locations such as towns, is 0.3. And then we also have uh, conflict weight, which is the attractiveness value for conflict locations, making them four times less likely to be chosen as a destination with the default value of 0 0.25. And camp weight, which is the attractiveness of a value for camp locations, making them twice as likely to be chosen as a destination, hence the default value of 2.0. We perform synthetic analysis uh, using FabFlip plugin, which is a combination of FabSim3 automation toolkit and the FLEA simulation code for forced migration. We then incorporate FabFlip with the EasyVQ toolkit to facilitate verification, validation, and then certain quantification for simulation analysis. EasyVQ is a component of VECMA open source toolkit, which enables straightforward execution of sensitive analysis on high-performance computing sources. We execute FAFLI runs using QCG pilot job. It's a pilot job mechanism which bypasses constraints of the regular queuing system identified with the scheduling workloads. So to perform sensitive analysis of forced migration, we can construct our models using FAFLI plugin, create an SUVQ script for sensitive analysis and submit execution runs to QCG pilot job scheduler. To perform synthetic analysis, we use EasyVQ by drawing samples uh, and using stochastic collocation. We extract Sobel indices using Sobel's method. We first define parameter space for the uncertain variables with the maximum and default values for synthetic analysis, which you can see on the right hand side code script. Next, we provided the range for each parameter and varying ranges using the uniform distribution with polynomial order of three for the sensitive analysis using CurseSpy library within the ECVQ, which you can see on the middle code script. And we performed our sensitive analysis. After submitting our simulations, we obtained results for sensitive analysis for six input parameters across four African conflicts, mainly Mali, Burundi, South Sudan, and Central African Republic. The obtained results identified that the default move chance, camp move chance, and the max move speed are the pivotal parameters in our uh, simulations, while the conflict move chance and the camp weight are sensitive parameters. Uh, and the uh, camp 
uh, conflict weight didn't have any influence on our validation output. We identified that max move speed and default move chances are pivotal parameters. We refine our assumption of flee for these parameters. Precisely, max move speed. Uh, we incorporate new modes of transport and propose new values based on qualitative research we have conducted with NGOs and researchers in the field thanks to International Organization for Migration. Uh, there we found that people t travel on average for 12 hours per day and walk on foot with more move speed of 3 to 4 kilometers per hour and then they initially depart as the roads are likely to be blocked by armed forces and they are unlikely to have secured good shared transportation. We include an additional parameter to this algorithm, main namely max walk speed with a movement speed of 35 km per day on average during the first travel from the conflict zones. While we change the value for the existing max move speed parameter from 200 km to 420 km per day as use shared vehicles. The next pivotal parameter identified was the default move chance that we modified by changing agent's travel distance. If an agent has traveled a sizable distance, it would benefit from a break. However, if agent has traveled relatively little, it's likely that agent traveling goods uh, supplies and willing to waste excessive time finding safety, we then defined a notion of recent travel distance, which means that when agents set out, they travel at least have the resources to travel conveniently for a day at maximum speed. Once they ha this has occurred, the travel, recent travel distance is greater than or equal to 0 0.5, while we set the non-exhaustion travel to less than 0 0.5 and move chance of the location for agents of that movement uh, will remain 1.0. In turn, this in introduces an amendment to the initial rule set of flee. We uh, define parameter space for the additional uncertain variable max wall speed with the minimum, maximum, and default values. And also, we redefine the ranges for max move speed and max walk speed in the second iteration, as you can see in the right hand side uh, code script. We performed our uh, synthetic analysis and we obtained some results which we, from which we found that camp move chance and the conflict move chance are the pivotal parameters in our simulation in this iteration, while max move speed, default move chance and the camp weight are the sensitive parameters. So we can um, also note that max wall speed and the conflict weight didn't have any uh, influence on the validation output. Uh, while there is a small outlier in the Mali, we calculated the mean for total error for forced migration simulations for two iterations across four conflicts. And uh, as you can observe, the total error has decreased in the second iteration as a result of refinements and parameter ranges. Uh, it's also important to note that the four conflicts have different variations of results for sensitivity analysis and the validation results, uh, which is due to differences in simulations. For instance, the simulation periods are different for each single conflict. The network map construction also differs road conditions, how and where agents move in the conflict scenario be, uh, actually plays a big role in these uh, variations. So to summarize, we have presented an example of sensitive driven simulation development, which provides us with a tool to calibrate our algorithm without the direct danger of overfitting to data and its resulting negative consequences in forecasting ability. We have shown that our approach was effective in reducing the uh, relative sensitivity of pivotal parameters while adding detail to the simulations. The most pivotal parameters, uh, which are the default move chance, uh, has the sensitivity has decreased by 74.8%, and the max move speed uh, sensitivity has decreased by 33.4% between the two iterations. Uh, we performed baseline investigation using stochastic collocation approach, but we also plan to perform sensitivity analysis using polynomial cost expansion. Uh, or quasi Monte Carlo to gain perf performance benefits as well as 
actually reaching a better uh, analysis for synthesis of each parameters. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, any questions? Yana, thank you. Uh, I trust you're online and you can hear me, is that correct? Hi, yes, I can. Great. So uh, as it happens, I don't see any questions there for you. So I'm going to talk to you about your work, which is fascinating and important. I think uh, you're talking about trying to demonstrate what you are capable of at this moment by reference to existing scenarios, which one has to do. Um, the question is, when did, w w how can you foresee this thing? actually being the system as it were being used in pr practical circumstances as it in the field to deal with uh, human disasters and migrations certainly uh, uh thank you for your question so first of the main uh importance that we have in investigating forced displacement is that we would like to target conflicts uh conflict situations that have forced displacement. And we do hope that in the future, they can actually be useful for NGOs and other organizations or the governments even that are facing forced displacement as well as their neighboring countries. So uh, not only for forced displacement, it can be also used for other situations such as when there is uh, weather uh, changes or uh, that makes our actually people to move. But in terms of sensitivity analysis, I think the main aspect that can be applied is that uh, this approach uh, can be applied to any simulation that has uh, a proper flow of uh, constructing uh, execution as well as analysis in order to understand what kind of input parameters they have applied. Thank you. And there's now a question that's come from Serge Gias, and he's asking you the following. Have you obtained results in terms of propagation of uncertainties through your model? Uh, so far, what we've done, this is the first analysis in terms of sense analysis, understanding how uh, our algorithm has input parameters and how they actually interact with each other, as well as the importance or sensitivities within this, our simulations. So uh, I wouldn't say that we actually obtained in terms of propagation of uncertainty yet, but it's something we would like to investigate further. Okay, now we've got one from Anna Nikishova. This is really boiling up. This is a great example of applying, applying sensitivity analysis for validation. Do you assume, uh, or are you going to assume any noise in the data you use in validation? Uh, certainly, because as in, uh, I mentioned, like each single uh, conflict has different aspects. Uh, when we develop it and there are differences between them, for instance, in constructing them, uh, making the network map and how this uh, conflict actually evolved as the initial, uh, at the stage of the initial um, kind of going on uh, propagation. So uh, we would like to do that as well in terms of the validation because each single parameter has their own differences and uh, we'd like to investigate in more detail how they affect you and, and uh, um, I'm going to ask you something now I'm just thinking that you know in terms of what you're doing where you do retrospective studies on scenarios that have evolved it strikes me that that's a position where you could find yourself subject to competition from the big data aficionados who might be using sort of more blind methods that don't address the detailed mechanism do you have any comments about the merits of your approach compared with a, a big data machine learning uh, attempt? Certainly, like one of the big things when you actually use machine learning is that you train your data to understand how, it, what kind of results you can get or predict something or forecast. Uh, whereas when you use simulations, one, the, one of the big aspects is that uh, using initial uh, input uh, data that you can extract, simulation allows you to understand and predict what has happened uh, without actually working with the data directly. So you have the initial parameters, initial uh, algorithm with the initial uh, input param uh, input uh, data, but there is no more interaction with it in order in terms of calibrating it. All right. And uh, there's another group of people and they're theoretical physicists who abhor large numbers of parameters. There's a famous anecdote between Freeman Dyson and 
Enrico Fermi about when Dyson told him he had a model with four parameters and uh, Fermi just replied that, well, John von, von Neumann told me that if I have uh, five parameters, then I can fit an elephant and wiggle his trunk. And that was the end of the conversation. How do you deal with the fact that you might be, uh, you know, you might have too many parameters for your model to be useful? So, uh, for instance, uh, when I investigated uh, in the second iteration, we had seven parameters uh, with different values. Uh, and uh, when we run it, executing the uh, Eagle machine, we had around 78,000 uh, jobs. Uh, but the main aspect is uh, not only the uh, how we execute it in terms of the number of jobs, I think the importance is that uh, first is identifying the main pivotal ones and, and tackling them one by one in order to understand how they are uh, changed or to compare it with the overall validation results. Right, thanks. Uh, I think um, at this point we need to move on because we're running slightly over schedule. Thanks again, Diana, very much.